one that's getting a lot of attention is um, the IOXT, which is new for IBC. At NAB, we introduced it as sort of codename Phaser, some of the technology behind it. And here at IBC, we're introducing it as a product that will ship uh, in the next uh, few months. And what's unique about it uh, is it's a Thunderbolt I.O. video and audio I.O. device with a lot of connectivity, supports 444 and 422 workflows uh, over one and a half gig and three gig uh, SDI links, lots of audio connectivity. The thing that makes it very, very unique is that it has two Thunderbolt ports, whereas all of the competitors on the market have introduced products that are single port. And what that means is you're able to, with the AJA IOXT, take advantage of everything that Thunderbolt has to offer. So you can continue the Thunderbolt chain to multiple devices, which is one of the advantages of Thunderbolt, having this high bandwidth connectivity across multiple devices. We have a new version 3.0 firmware for the Key Pro, the original Key Pro and the Key Pro Mini. It's the first time we have a unified release um, it, that sort of merges a lot of the capabilities together as much as possible. Both units will gain um, uh, super out sort of time code window burn and status burn up to a monitor, which was a big user request and a lot of other functionality. On the original Key Pro, a lot of the ports are being enabled and turned on like the express cards and lens tap ports. And our Key Pro Mini that we introduced at last IBC has been very successful for us. Uh, we've, we're partnering with Avid to introduce DNX HD codec support uh, coming very soon as a free upgrade and it's the first time DNxHD has been implemented in hardware. Supporting DNxHD natively will mean that they can plug in into the native Avid workflows directly from the camera and have the, the ease of recording to ProRes or to DNxHD in one box just via a simple menu switch. You know, Avid is so established and so, uh, especially in the broadcast markets and other areas, that, that codec support was very important to a lot of our users. Control room software is sort of us taking a look at our product line and realizing you know, we had multiple interfaces and ways of working. You know, if you were on a Mac, it was very different with your Kona than it would be on a PC. And the interfaces looked different, and the workflows were different, and it just seemed time to sort of throw that out and start over fresh. We had a lot of requests years ago for that capability of having a software tool to drive our hardware. People didn't want to have to fire up a nonlinear editor to just ingest or play out material. So we created a tool called VTR Exchange on the Mac, and we had Machina on the PC, which now are merged into Control Room. And so taking multiple things that were multiple tools before, making it one tool that looks the same and acts the same, whether you're on Mac, Windows, or Linux. We have a new mini converter called the UDC that is, takes the basic conversion functions of our FS2 which is our one RU frame sync that we introduced at NAB, and putting that IP into a compact form factor. So very high quality, um, up-down cross conversion in a portable form factor, supports 3G video, has HDMI output. There's still a very strong interaction with Final Cut Pro 10 as far as AJA products are concerned. We can display video out of Final Cut Pro 10 uh, by mirroring the desktop. We have our software tools like VTR Exchange and soon uh, AJA control room for ingest and playout and uh, doing the more tape-like functionality.